Hello everyone, this is Arrow, and welcome back to Sundown Moon Up Pod Fix. Today we'll be continuing Fuck Boys by Random Weird Cat, Chapter 34. I I bullied Deku when we were kids, and I've I still do. I used my quirk on him and he he just went with it and I s- still try to hurt him. I'm still bullying him. I'm I used to hate him. Kirishima's face dropped so quickly, it almost gave Katsuki chest pains. You bullied him? So many times. I left him to bleed. I made him bleed. I'm... I was... Katsuki stood in the middle of a sea and it was swallowing him piece by piece. He keeps his eyes up and doesn't look at anyone. I... I almost killed him a few times. Kirishima quickly rises to his feet. I, y- you've got to be joking, right? Kirishima asks. His voice cracks. You wouldn't do that. You're violent, but not that violent. He cracks a nervous smile and glances around the room for comfort. His eyes were filled with hope. Bakugo flinches. It, it's... A hand gently holds his cheek, turning his head. Suddenly, he's staring into Ashido's dark eyes. Please? Are you telling us the truth? She sounds desperate and hopeful. Katsuki feels a cold chill run up his spine. I'm not lying. Why? Kaminari yells. He tore his hands away and stands up with Kirishima. Kirishima stays silent. He shakes his head and grips his shaking and hardened hands. The quirk go- his quirk goes off without him knowing. Katsuki sobs and they quiet down at the noise. Katsuki tries to hide his sniffling and glares at the ground. He had to be honest with them. They were his closest friends. I, I was better. He was quirkless and he just he wouldn't stay. I thought if I used my quirk. His brain was going too fast for his mouth and the two just weren't connecting. His mouth kept stuttering. Kirishima steps into his space. Why do you think you thought he wouldn't get back up? That he should have stayed there, below you where he belonged? Is that it? Katsuki winces. He's never heard Kirishima sound so cold and pained. I've been bullied. It could push you too far. Did you push him too far? God, it sucks so much. We we had this talk. Kirishima reaches up with his hardened hand and tries to run his fingers through his hardened hair. We, we all told you we've been bullied and cried to you. You you said you'd kill all of our boys. Kirishima's round eyes filled with tears. Katsuki nods and his throat closes up. Did, did you ever stop? You said you were still going, but how far? Sarah asks. The boy held onto his own hand and in a death grip. If he squeezed any harder, the tape in his elbow would start to come out. This wasn't how it was supposed to go. Kirishima was supposed to... He's supposed to understand. He always understands. Uh, I'm... Katsuki frowns. He has kept going with it. At every chance he gets, he calls Deku. Well, Deku. He hasn't said his real name or his surname in years. I went pretty far. So, so what? He was weaker than you. So what if he was quirkless? Why do you- Sarah inhaled sharply. Kirishima reaches, tries to reach out, but he pulled his hand back when his quirk came on. A pink hand hits Katsuki in the chest. Ashido grinds her teeth together, her hand raised. You, you were toxic when you first got here. Rude and snappy. I, I just thought maybe you were like me and hurt. She covers her mouth and hiccups. Bakugo bites the inside of his cheek. Deku was quirkless. I I had the quirk. I was on top. I was- am better. I'm trying to be. Ashido grabs him by the collar again. Do you hear yourself? Better? Better isn't- She freezes and releases him. Her hand shook. Deku. You called in Deku before Uraka did. She got the name because of you. Were you calling him useless? Kaminari sucks in a sharp breath. Deku means useless? 
He asked Uraraka about it, and she said it was supposed to mean they can do it. Not, not that cruel word. He didn't have a quirk when we were kids, Katsuki says meekly. Kirishima's skin hardens again, and he stomps his foot into the ground. No, no one's useless, you hear? No one's useless. Bullying, that's unmanly. You're not manly at all, he yells at Kotsky. He stumbles back till he runs into a wall. His arm scrapes against the wall and leaves scratch marks. Kaminari's head perks up from Sarah's shoulder. Since you were kids? Have you been bullying him since you were kids? Bakugo's mouth runs dry. Y yeah. Ashido's pupils dilate and big tears start to roll down her cheeks. When did it start? Was it just you? Her cheeks flush and her hands clench. When we were five, and no, there were others. Kirishima's eyes widen. You went after him in the beginning. During the assessment test, y you looked so terrifying. W were you trying to kill him? Kasuki froze. Was he? He knew he wanted to hurt Deku and beat the answers about his quirk out of him. Did he want to kill him? Saro takes a deep breath. He looks at everyone in the room with a large frown in hurt eyes. Kaminari shudders. This is deeper than, than us. You need help. Professional help. So many professionals. Saro's breathing becomes uneven. I, I can't be friends with the bully. I, I'm sorry. I just, I can't. Saro says while stepping back. Kaminari follows him his lip quivering and his hair covering his eyes. Katsuki feels something crack. It sounded like glass that was smacked. His blunt nails dig into his skin. I've been bullied for my quirk my whole life. I've been called dumb every day and it just got worse when my quirk came in. Would you have been one of those guys? Kaminari heaves and bites at his lip to distract himself. The burn to distract himself from the burning in his throat. He numbly reaches and wraps himself around Saro's arm. Katsuki wants to reach out. N no, I wouldn't. I'd just be bullying Midoriya. Kaminari interrupts him. Ashido bites her lip. We've all been bullied for something. She glances at her friends and finds them nodding. We've been hurt. W were you hurt and just took your anger out on Midoriya? Kirishima asks. The glass creaks and a spiderweb of cracks spread throughout it. Bakugo pulls his feet up to his chest. N no, I just wanted to beat him. He's smarter and he always makes me. Bakugo stops himself from continuing. Sero grits his teeth together. You better finish that before I start having a panic attack. I'm supposed to be better, but Deku makes it feel like I'm weak. Katsuki's shoulders fall. Ashido sniffles. You just... A sob es escapes from her lips and she harshly sucks in air while covering her face. Kaminari peeks out from his bangs. Kaminari peeks out from his bangs. I'll admit it, maybe I'm not the smartest or therapist, but you just kept your anger in and poured it out on Midoriya. He looks around at the others. I don't think I can be in here. N not now. Maybe, maybe later when... Ashida rushes over. She holds onto his hand. We'll talk more later. It's okay, Kami. You don't have to... Her shaky voice fades when the door slams shut. Katsuki, Katsuki flinches at the noise. A chunk of glass falls away. Bro, cat... Bakugo? I I'm sorry, but... I don't think we can be best friends right now. You can still call and text me and we can talk, but if you still think you need to be better and Midoriya is useless, I don't want to be next to you. I I'm so sorry. I can't. Sarah gently touches his hardened arm and pulls, and pulls him towards the door. They both wipe their eyes roughly. We, we will talk later. Promise me, Bakugo. Can you do that? Sarah speaks softly. Bakugo hiccups. Yeah, I, 
I fucking promise. The two left immediately after. The glass shatters into a thousands of pieces and shards. The pieces fall into the darkness of Katsuki's mind. The door slowly closes and Katsuki lets out a wheeze. His hands clutch his chest and he sobs. No, 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 please. He begs them to come back. It's always nice when karma comes around, a new voice says. Kasuki's eyes widen and he sits up. The lights go out and the window shatters. Glass flies at him and he tries to cover his eyes and face. I do believe this is quite a sight. Katsuki Bakugo in all his burning glory. His walls are crumbling down and his crown has been taken. The voice gets was getting closer. Bakugo aims at, at the voice and sets his quirk off on instinct. A flash of light and Bakugo sees death in the corner of his room. Death wore a suit and a dark skull-like mask. You have something that I want. Chapter 35 Pour hypnotic into the glass, then add a slice of pineapple to the mixture. Kirigiri explains. His hands move quickly as he tips the pineapple mixture into the hypnotic. The portal opens and a bottle of blue blueberry schnapps appears in his misty hand. He pours that on top of his other mixture. And now you have a tropical breeze drink. The villains in Shinso watch the colors mix. The bottle of blueberry schnapps disappears and Kirigiri adds a pineapple slice to the rim. He slides it to Magne, and she gladly takes it and takes a sip. Ah, uh, my favorite. She takes a bite of the pineapple and hums. Tomura huffs. Why don't I get one? Kirigiri's eyes narrow. You dislike pineapples, Tomura. He wipes down the counter and fixes his sleeves. Tomura nods. Good point. I want one of the vodka bottles. No, those are for the customers, Kirigiri replies. Hidoshi raises an eyebrow. You have customers? Yes, but Kirigiri be began. Tomura tries to reach over under the counter for a bottle. But we've been closed for days now, so it doesn't matter if I have a drink. Tomura interrupts Kirigiri. Dabi smirks. Nobody wants your crusty lips on a bottle. Tomura kicks his stool. I'm a villain, not a savage. I'm using a cup. Toga giggles. She leans in close to Hitoshi and barely tries to whisper. He used a bowl last time. Tomura tries to kick her too. Shut up. We didn't have any cups. Spinner sighs and leans on his elbows, watching as Tomura almost falls. Kirigiri quickly places his misty hand on the other's back and stabilizes him. You didn't want to wash any dishes when it was your turn, so that's on you. Tomura hisses, his fuzzy hair already in every direction, and his red eyes glare at the scaly man. I don't want wet old food touching my hands, and I can't fucking wear normal gloves without them turning to dust, so shut it. The door bursts open. Twice comes running in. The purse swings in his arm in the air until he stops moving. Guys, guys. He glances at Toga and Magne. And gals, gals. Dobby sighs. I swear, if this is about another stray animal you found in an alley, I'm setting your ass on fire. He raises his hand and his fingers ignite. Twice shakes his head and digs something out of the purse Magne gave him. He pulls out a green apple lollipop with a clear wrapper. Look, I got a lollipop for Izuku when it gets better. Hitoshi's mood instantly goes down at the mention of his friend. I doubt he's going to want a lollipop. He turns his back to Twice and leans against the counter. Twice makes a noise in the back of his throat that sounds like a cry. Why? If he's gone through everything I think he's gone through, he's not going to be the same as he was. So he isn't going to accept a lollipop from you. Or anyone. Hitoshi's chin rests on the counter. He blinks harshly against the sudden, his suddenly teary eyes. Twice seems to deflate. He might still want a lollipop. I'll save it for later. He slowly makes his way across the bar and puts the lollipop on top of the mini fridge. Toga pats twice his head. He'll love it. Don't listen to Mr. Grumpy Pants. Twice leans into her hand and lets his shoulders droop. Yeah, I hope so. Twice grumbles while taking a seat next to the girl. 
Hitoshi turns his head and glares at the masked man. Dobby sees his look and chuckles. Here we go. He runs a hand through his hair and leans against the counter with his fist pressed against his cheek. Hitoshi sits up. Fuck all of you. Honestly, we were fine. You could have just let us go back to UA. We would have helped him in a normal and not terrifying way. He would get normal therapy and get justice against Bakugo. I would be able to see my dads and sleep in my own fucking bed. He gets up and they all watch, ready to move at any given second. Magna goes up, goes to get up. Tomura holds his hand out and stops her. Hitoshi paces from the wall with a dartboard of All Might's picture on it to the locked door. Fucking jerks. Yeah, you're a bunch of villains. Your boss is fucking with Izuku's head. Do you really think that's going to end well? He screams, glaring at Tomura, and tries to see his eyes from behind the hand and pale strands of hair that block his red eyes. You fucked with my dad? Is taking and giving a quirk back even safe? Is my dad in a coma right now or brain dead? I definitely don't know. Nobody's fucking told me. Alfron almost destroyed Yue and hurt a lot of heroes, probably even killed a bunch too. Hitoshi sniffles. His nose becomes stuffy and his eyes burn even though he's blinking. Is All Might even alive right now? Where is he? Why can't I see him? Hitoshi angrily wipes his eyes on his shoulder and bites his lip. He tries to think back to when Hisashi would hug him until his panic panic attacks were over. He tries to remember that warmth and remember those shitty jokes his dad told him to help him. I'm fucking stuck in these damn cuffs without my quirk and I can't do anything. I can't save Izuku. I can't help All Might. I'm stuck with you fuckers playing games and talking to all of you. Hitoshi slams his foot into the wall, not caring about the pain or the dent in the wall. Dobby whistles. You gotta blow off some steam. He gets up with a glance at Kirigiri and a portal opens. Dobby grabs Hitoshi by the arm and pulls him through. Hitoshi looks around at the new settings. Relief flows through him and he finally gets away from that damn bar and tiny room. His knees shake, but Dobby still hasn't let go of them. The warmth of Dobby's hand has no was nothing like Hisashi or Shota's warmth. It felt like the sun was touching him. No, like it was burning him. He tries to pull away. Dobby lets go and lets him stumble away and puts some distance between them. What are we doing here? Hitoshi asks. They stood in an empty warehouse that was filled with dust and broken cars. Blowing off some steam. Dobby digs into his pocket of his coat and pulls out a key. He takes a large step forward and grabs Hitoshi's wrist. The boy's nostrils flare with while he sneers, and Dobby tries to hold back his smirk. No quirks, no matter what, I'm not replying to you, so that's not an option. Even with that, you can try to fight. I still got my quirk, and I can kick your ass without it, so I wouldn't try anything. Dobby takes off the cuffs and holds them t at his side. Hitoshi glares. I can take you. Dobby chuckles and stays silent. He walks over to one of the cars and reaches into one of the broken windshields. He takes out a crowbar and twirls it. Hitoshi growls, grows nervous. Come on, talk to me, aren't we buds? He walks over and hands the boy the crowbar. Dobby doesn't turn his back to Hitoshi and walks backwards, keeping his eyes on him. Dobby waits a few minutes before speaking. Don't even think about attacking. Shigaraki and the others may like you but I don't. I won't hesitate to knock you out. With that, Dobby walks towards the door and kneels down. Hitoshi glances at the crowbar and back to the other man, thinking if he could throw it at him and run away. Dobby looks at him with a knowing look. He raises an eyebrow and smirks at him. Start breaking shit. You got an hour, Dobby says while leaning his back against the door. Hitoshi's grip on the crowbar tightens and he walks over to a dented car. He smashes the crowbar against the hood and huffs. This is the most you'll ever hear me talk, so you better listen. Fuck you two. We could have let you go, yeah, but Shigaraki and the other guy wanted to keep you both. You should have seen Hans McGee freaking out about giving you back. He thought about you the hardest, flipped a coin and everything. 
He digs into his pocket and pulls out a cigarette. He lights it with one of his fingers. Midoriya does need help, and I don't know how well that whole thing is going with All for One. He's probably going to be even more fucked up. I know the League definitely won't let him go. I don't think I want to either. He reminds me of a kid I used to know. He blows out the smoke in a hoop and blows a long stream of smoke through it. Hitoshi slams the crowbar into one of the tires indoors. That kid was messed up too. The two suffered a lot as kids. He inhaled and smoked some out of his nose, and smoke cam comes out of his nose. The heroes are probably thinking of a plan right now to get you both back, so you might see your dads again. Eraserhead is fine, not in a coma or anything. Last I heard, he's stuck in UA infirmary with Recovery Girl, and he took a few days off of hero work. Completely fine, besides a concussion and broken ribs. That got a look from the boy. Dobby shrugs. Shigaraki's got a crush on the dude. I'm surprised you haven't heard anything about that yet. But your other dad is patrolling the dorms in UA, so he's fine too. All for one did fuck up a lot of heroes. I have no idea about the Nomu, and All Might stuck in one of the underground hideouts, still breathing and fine-ish. Dobby shrugs again. Hitoshi wails on the door and windows, each hit causing a new and bigger dent. All Might got his eyes beat by All for One a while ago, broke a rib, split lip, and a sprained ankle. You can't see him because something happened with his quirk and he's like a balloon right now, deflated and everything. Dobby looks at the already half-gone cigarette and puts it out on the ground next to him. I really gotta quit. He puts the cigarette back in a small box and hears silence through the warehouse. Dobby looks up and sees Hitoshi's shoulders shaking. The crowbar was lodged inside the door. Kid? The boy turns around and glares, not even caring about the tears streaming down his face. Dobby rolls his eyes and gets off the ground. Fine. You don't want to beat up cars. He shrugs off his jacket and throws it onto the ground beside him. He stands with a short distance between them. Let's pretend I'm not the villain and you aren't a hostage, and let's spar like pals. Hitoshi doesn't wait and rushes at him, fist raised. Dobby takes a step to the right and dodges. He grabs the kid's wrist and swipes his feet from under him. Hitoshi hits the ground with a loud thud. He gets up and wipes his tears. He runs at Dobby and tries to tackle him. You know, you're much more successful when you're not crying. Shut up! Hitoshi grabs the man's waist and pushes against him. An elbow to the, to the back sends him face first into the ground. Blood fills his mouth as his nose connects to the ground. Hitoshi practically howls and grabs Dobby's foot, pulling with everything he's got until the man stumbles, stum stumbling to keep his balance. He pulls himself to the side and kicks Dobby in the chest. He lets go of his foot and stands back up. Dobby is laughing. That was shitty. Hitoshi runs at him again. I said shut up. He raises his left foot to block Dobby's punch and throws his own punch again. Dobby ducks and leans back. His foot slams into Hitoshi's stomach and sends, him, sends the kid to his knees. Hitoshi is on the ground wheezing. Fuck. He tries to get up and finds his stomach turning. Y you fucking asshole. Dobby grins. It pulls at his staples and Hitoshi tries to keep his insides inside. Dobby pulls him up by his collar and pushes him back. This time, Dobby races forward to, tr to strike first. Hitoshi's gaze hardened it hardens, and he watches Dobby raise his fists in the air. He takes the first fist to the face and lets his fist rise up from under Dobby. It's very satisfying watching Dobby's head fly back as his fist slams into his jaw and chin. Hitoshi glances at the crowbar and runs for it while Dobby's distracted. He slides and tries to rip it from the car. Blue flames surround him and hit the car. His eyes widen and he feels a hand grabbing onto his collar. Watch it. The fire pops the tires, and the car slams into the ground. Hitoshi scoffs as the car soon becomes a giant flame. Jerk. I won that. Dobby gives him such a look. It's like, it looks like his dad's, I know you're bullshitting face. He can't stop the laughter that's bubbling in his chest. He tosses his head back and lays on the ground. 
Dobby kneels next to him while shaking his head. Hey Siri, say no, I won that to Itoshi for me. He yells and echoes through the room. They both wait until a car says, A car away, Siri spoke. I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Hitoshi laughs even harder. Do you normally have breakdowns like this? Dobby questions. He drags Hitoshi back towards where he left his, the cuffs. No, only when I'm dealing with a bunch of dumbass villains. Hitoshi sasses him, trying to dig his feet into the ground to stop them from moving. Dobby grins and reaches down to grab the cuffs off the ground, slipping them back into the onto the reluctant hostage's wrists. Me too. All right, everyone, that is the end for chapters 34 and 35 of Fuck Bullies. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.